Okay, okay. I'm done messing around. What a turnaround this whole Mario Kart 8 DLC situation is. One of the most lazy things Nintendo has ever Nintendoed has now become some of the most rewarding DLC I've seen for any game. From improving graphics, to adding new game modes, to adding new characters, Nintendo turns something disappointing into something that fans actually wanted and they were asking for, which you don't see very often from Nintendo. I now have faith that Nintendo will end off this whole booster course pass right, but I often lie in bed wondering, what if I was the CEO of Nintendo and could make the booster course pass whatever I wanted it to be? Yes, I am unemployed, why do you ask? This is how I would finish off waves 5 and 6 of the Booster Course Pass. This is not a predictions video, this is just wishful thinking. So, let's begin with wave 5, which will release on July 12th. And the first track of the Feather Cup will be Los Angeles Laps. I know, a staggering hot take from your boy. I've never played Los Angeles Laps because it never shows up in any tours. But after watching gameplay of the track, it looks good. You see, every Mario Kart Tour track that has been well received, like Sydney Sprint and Singapore Speedway, they all have something in common. It's not that they have amazing designs or anything, it's that we're visiting wacky and amazing set pieces. Mario Kart is Mario Kart because we get to drive through interesting places that we wouldn't get to drive through in any other type of racing game, like the Infinity Pool and the Canals. There's a reason people don't like Tokyo Blur, because it's not fun to just drive on a road and pass some buildings. This isn't Gran Turismo, this is Mario Kart. What I'm trying to say is Los Angeles Laps looks like one of the better tour tracks, what with its beaches and going through sports stadiums and these oil things. I don't know what they're called. Los Angeles Laps has unique and interesting set pieces to drive through, and I think that'll make it a good track. Also, this track has one of the weirdest songs in the entire series, and I'd really like to see what it would sound like when a live band plays it. The second track will be Sunset Wilds. I want to continue the tradition of the second track in the waves being the most simple tracks, and while Sunset Wilds isn't necessarily super easy, it's still a fairly short track, so I'm putting it here. I think Sunset Wilds would just look incredible with Mario Kart 8's graphics, especially during the sundown phase of the track. Also, with its shy guys that dance around the stage and you having to boost your way through mud, I think this stage could pull a Riverside Park, where the most simple track in the wave actually has unique mechanics that set it apart from every other stage in the entire game. Also, the Tour Remix is really good, so you can just update that and use it. The third track will be a big returning fan favorite, Koopa Cape. The first order of business for this track is to fix that pipe section. It needs to be a tube again, not a bunch of half pipes. It doesn't even make sense, the track already has half pipes in it. I don't think what Koopa Cape needed was more half pipes. It just kind of ruins the best part of the track that everybody likes. So yeah, just make it a tube again and have the electric things. And make said tube section an anti-gravity section. I also want a very faithful remix of this track's music, something similar to what Deloof did. The last track of the Feather Cup will be Piranha Plant Cove, and yes, PD Piranha is associated with this track, so that's why I'm putting it here. I've only played the third variant of this track, and everybody tells me that it's the worst variant of the three, so if that's the case, then it should be a pretty darn good track. I'm interested to see how 
a non-city track will play out in tour style, where every lap changes its route. And in Mario Kart 8's graphics, this track could look amazing. I mean, jungle tracks always look amazing in Mario Kart 8. And a live band playing this song, I think, would just be lovely. And that finishes up the first cup of Wave 5. The first track of the Cherry Cup will be the brand new Rome Avanti. The reason why I'm putting Rome here is because I don't want it to be in the same wave as Vancouver Velocity and Athens Dash, because both Vancouver Velocity and Rome Avanti are set at night, but Rome's set pieces are very similar to Athens Dash. At least it appears that way. As of recording this, I've only seen the teaser trailer for Rome Avanti, and it looks like a good track. I'm hoping that it leans more into the Roman architecture and landmark side of things instead of just basic city at night thing, but I'm confident that Rome Avanti will be a fine track. And the music, it, it's fine, it's just fine. The second track here might be seen as a questionable choice, but I'm putting Mushroom Bridge here, and Wiggler will be associated with this track. I want this track in the Booster Course Pass for two reasons. One, it has one of the best songs in the series, and I need a jazz remix of it. And two, it has unique mechanics that set it apart from every other track in the game like the bomb cars and the mushroom cars and the wiggler buses which should destroy you. It looks different and plays different from the other traffic tracks in the game. The third track will be Bowser Castle 3, the fabled Super Nintendo track and Oh man, I need to see this in Mario Kart 8. I think it would look incredible. I think it would play incredible. The anti-gravity sections would be awesome. The only thing I would change from the tour version is in that last long turn over the chain. I want lava spewers to come up through the chains. Lava spewers are in the beginning of the track, so I don't know why they're not at the end. And for the music of this track, I just want a symphony of electric guitars. Like, you know, those string symphonies where it's like hundreds of violins? Imagine that, but it's just all electric guitars. That, that should be this song. And yes, Kamek is associated with this track. Kamek, not comic, or whatever the hell he was saying in that presentation. The final track of Wave 5 will be Squeaky Clean Sprint. I know, it's a big shocker. This track looks really good. It looks like it might turn out to be the best Nitro track we've seen so far in the DLC. The music is amazing. The interesting, wacky set pieces we're gonna get to drive through, all the references in the background, it just looks perfect. I didn't really know what to expect from a bathroom course, but I'm pleasantly surprised. But that is not it for Way 5. You see, there will be a new update to the game, like there is every time a new wave comes out, and this wave's update will specifically be to battle mode. Not battle tracks, but changes to balloon battle and bob on blast. I want to add settings where you can make stock battles, like the good old days, because that's really what everyone wants. These two modes are hindered by the need for a time limit. The other modes work perfectly fine with the time limit, it's these two modes that we really need extra options to make them enjoyable again. This one's also a long shot, but maybe custom items for battle mode? 
I mean, why not? You already added it to versus mode. And that is Wave 5. It looks really, really good. But my only gripe with it is that this wave has two Nitro tracks, which might make Wave 6 in comparison seem less than. So now, I have to come up with a way to make Wave 6 seem like the biggest and best wave in the entire DLC without it having two Nitros. Well, let's go. Wave 6 will release on December 25th, because why not? And the first track of the Acorn Cup is Vancouver Velocity. Man, I'm just a spicy hot take salad today. Like I said, this track and Rome Avanti seem to have very similar atmospheres. So I put them in different waves. Once again, Vancouver Velocity looks like it has interesting set pieces to drive through, well, like the national parks and the ice rink and the suspension bridges, which should be in anti-gravity. And a live orchestrated performance of this music would be just spectacular. Or you could make something similar to Singapore Speedway's remix. Just saying. The second track is a fan favorite. Not a huge fan favorite, but it's a pretty popular track. Daisy Cruiser. I can't really think of any changes to make to this track. I think you could just spruce up the model from tour to be pretty. That's about it. I know I said the most simple tracks go in this slot, but compared to the other tracks I've selected for this wave, Daisy Cruiser is simple in comparison. For the remix of this song, I'd want something similar to Cheap Cheap Beach's remix from the base game. The third track is a bit of a weird one, but hear me out. I'm putting Athens Dash here. This is such a unique level compared to any other city tour track that it could just stand as its own nitro. It's not even really a city, it's more just driving on the Acropolis, which makes for a really good track. It's my favorite track in Mario Kart Tour. There's so many different set pieces, it honestly reminds me of Woohoo Loop from Mario Kart 7. It has ruins, mountains, and a small city section. Also, live orchestra playing this song, please. I don't want to place Athens Dash at the end of the Acorn Cup, because if we're going to make Wave 6 be the biggest wave, we need to have the heaviest hitters of any heavy hitters. So at the end of the Acorn Cup, I'm putting Airship Fortress. It's my favorite track in the series, okay? Literally, Nintendo could just completely rip the model from Mario Kart Tour and it would still be one of the best tracks in Mario Kart 8. It's that good. Nintendo can't just advertise this DLC as being a grand celebration of Mario Kart, which brings back so many fan favorite tracks, and then not include Airship Fortress, one of the most unique and amazing tracks in the series. What the fuck are you playing at, Nintendo? I can understand exclusions like DK Mountain, and Toad's Factory, and even Mako Wuhu, but we cannot exclude Airship Fortress, especially if Wave 6 is going to be the best wave. The Acorn Cup looks incredible, but how do I make the Spiny Cup the best cup in the DLC? Well, it's gonna start off with a tour track, this we know because the sky is still up and fire is hot. How do I make this city track the best city track? Well, this city is going to be Rio. I'm gonna call it Rio Rally. Now you might say, there's nothing really too special about Rio to make it the best tour city track, but this isn't gonna be Rio on just any other day of the week. This is going to be Rio during Carnival. Imagine a Mario Kart track with this kind of setting. It would make for the best track in tour. The anti-gravity potential, the music, Brazilian jazz, come on. 
Why haven't we gotten this track already? Driving through parade floats and incredible sights, a gliding section where we get to trick off Jesus. I want to trick off Jesus! Anyways, that is my proposal for the tour track to start off the final cup in the game. For the second track of the Spiny Cup, I'm picking another fan favorite, Dino Dino Jungle. Much like Wave 3, which had two Mario Kart 7 tracks, this wave will have two Double Dash tracks. And this one in particular, I don't really see a lot of changes that need to be made to this one. They can just, once again, spruce up the model from Tour. And the music for this stage is... It, it, it's, a, it's a bunch of drums, but it's a bunch of drums. You might be saying that there's too many jungle tracks in Mario Kart 8 now, but each one, I think, is unique in its own way. DK Jungle is based off of the Donkey Kong Country games, Riverside Park is kind of just a standard jungle, Piranha Plant Cove is a jungle temple, which every Minecraft veteran knows are the worst temples. And Dino Dino Jungle is a prehistoric jungle with dinosaurs. So I think every jungle track here is justified in being in Mario Kart 8. Speaking of jungle tracks, everybody thinks that Mob DK, the data mine track in Mario Kart Tour, is going to be a Donkey Kong Country themed track. Now, I don't want another DK Island track. However, if this is going to be the penultimate track to the final track of the Booster Course Pass, that would mean this track would need to be based on a villain. So I don't want Donkey Kong Island, I want Crocodile Isle from Donkey Kong Country 2. And this is how the track would play out. So it would be similar to the Yoshi's Island track from Wave 4, instead this would be a section track. The first lap would start on Gangplank Galleon, where the game starts, and it starts similar to Airship Fortress, where you have to dodge cannonballs and also dodge some Kremlins. Then there's a small section where you go into the ship, and it's a water section. At the end of this water section, we see Ungarde break through the wall of the pirate ship, and eventually we go into Crocodile Cauldron, where we are bouncing off balloons, sort of like the mushrooms in Mushroom Gorge. Eventually, we go into a mine, where crooks are throwing their boomerangs at us, and lap 2 begins with a glider section where we are shot out of the volcano and into a bramble maze. This bramble maze section would be an anti-gravity, and it would split into two paths, similar to the anti-gravity section in Big Blue. We can also see squawks flying around this section, and creme quay in the background, which I don't have in the actual track. The Bramble Maze leads into a beehive where we have to dodge bees and dodge honey spots that will spin drivers out. The final portion of Lap 2 will take place in the Theme Park section of Donkey Kong Country 2, specifically Rickety Rails, the most iconic level from that game. This section would have Kremlings throwing barrels onto the track, which the drivers would have to avoid. Then, lap 3 starts with a small section through the deep woods of Gloomy Gulch. It's a very short section where we can see haunted halls in the background, but eventually the forest opens up, everything is bright again, and we can see Castle K. Rule in the distance. But first, we have to go through Clapper's Cavern. There'll be a section where Clapper is freezing the water, but then the water freezes away, so you have to time it so that you drive across the frozen water, which makes the players go faster, while the players going into the water will go slower. Eventually, we go into Castle K. Rule, which is the meat and potatoes of the final lap. We'll see crushers similar to the thwomps, we'll see huge kremlings trying to block us, we'll also avoid pits of acid, and the track ends with a final glider section being shot out of the top of Castle K. Rule. 
this glider section takes us towards the flying croc, which K. Rule is trying to escape to. And at the end of the glider section, we break into the flying croc, and the person in first place gets to hit K. Rule with their car, and he dies. And that's the Mob DK track. So yeah, I like that idea, and obviously. Diddy Kong would be associated with this track, and he would be the first character introduced in this wave. Also, the music for this track, you could just pick any song from Donkey Kong Country 2. It has one of the best soundtracks in video game history. Remix any of them. And obviously, the final track of Wave 6 and the Booster Course Pass as a whole is Wii Rainbow Road. And honestly, this is one of the best tracks in the series. It should have anti-gravity sections, and the character introduced with this track would be Funky Kong. Because when you think of Wii Rainbow Road, you think of Funky Kong. Also, a live orchestra playing this song would be magical. And it should have the star bits from Mario Galaxy in the background. But that's not all of Wave 6, because Wave 6 will have four new battle tracks, two returning ones and two brand new ones. The returning battle tracks will be Block Fort and Funky Stadium, because Funky Kong. And Block Fort is like the most popular battle track in the series. The brand new battle tracks will be Kamex Laboratory, because that sounds fire, and also you could have Cursed item boxes, which essentially act as fake item boxes that Kamek is making in his laboratory, and the second new battle track will be Brinstar Depths, because if it can make a good Nintendo Land map, it'll make a good battle track map. And that is how you make Wave 6 the best wave out of all of them, and a perfect ending to the Booster Course Pass. And that's it! That's how I would make the rest of the Booster Course Pass. But there's one more thing, one more update that this wave will have, and you might notice it when you're playing online and you get, say, Coconut Mall from Wave 1, and you'll notice how vibrant and detailed the track looks, and you'll notice they went back and retextured all of those old DLC tracks to look as good as the tracks from the base game. So, what do you think of that as the end of the Booster Course Pass? I believe this is the best possible ending that this DLC could get. And there's still a watermark down there. Yeah, I still am not paying for the full version of Cyberlink, okay? I need money, so subscribe to my OnlyFans.